Good morning, folks. As you watch the northeastern limb here, you'll see the unusual motions on SDO. It's actually not that unusual. It happens every few weeks and is a normal part of the satellite operation. Hopefully you can notice the filament activity emits the shifts in the images. One released and another is still incoming, stuck firmly in place. Let's jump over to spaceweathernews.com. Solar flaring is low, but that's only because we can't see the other side of the sun. A major eruption has taken place on the backside of our star. This one is big enough to have been a moderate concern if it had been erupted in Earth's direction. A titanic explosion that has already begun to affect Earth despite its far side position. Earth is still magnetically connected back there behind the western limb and those connections were energized carrying high energy protons to Earth. Not quite at storm levels yet however but this is the way that far side eruptions can affect Earth through the interplanetary magnetic field connections. In terms of Earth directed eruptions we've got some new spots ahead down south but all focus stays up with those large spots coming in. No magnetic mixing yet but a lot of good umbras here. Also got more incoming on the southern hemisphere. Coronal hole facing Earth not many other factors in play at all, but we are still seeing a moderate seismic uptick. It continued the last day, with above average tremors south of New Zealand and Australia, and also an earthquake to the north that rang well up into 6 magnitude range despite the lower rating by the USGS. We also have a strange geological event in India, smoke and ash coming from a 2 foot hole in the ground and there's allegedly no volcano there. Because of it, at this point there are no alerts and no action being taken. The well-known Fuego volcano is increasing activity across the world as well. Lastly, there was an earth spot quake maker from Michigan yesterday. You'll remember that. Well, it's moved eastward to the coastline now and popped another unusual location rumble as she arrived. Many of you heard that the new sunspot data sets came into play today. The old ones are still available and for all but niche and sensitive analyses there's really not much difference. What we see here is the 12-month predictions indicating our star is indeed headed for solar minimum soon. This was the guess after the solar pole flip appeared to be complete a few weeks ago. Let's go to the ice. Antarctica at the second highest extent on record, just below last year. Meanwhile, there hasn't been this much Arctic ice in June in a decade. Website members, be sure to check out Deeper Look episode 58. This was posted yesterday. Billy and I got on Skype. Let's go to tropical activity as one system here aims for the Philippines. Another one tracks towards Guam here and is pretty strong at the moment. A third still slinking slowly south through the islands there. While we're over here, let's see the convergences east and west at Australia and New Zealand. Moderate weather alerts for both convergence lines. Let's do Europe next. Lows bunched up with their pull from the south met by drier air from the east. No mystery at all what is controlling the weather in this part of the world. And last but not least, we'll see the long convergence line in the US. While the top alerts will stick to the eastern part of the convergence, I would expect some more of that unusual weather for the west, including flood potential, and this is without even any east pacific hurricane activity. We've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 6.25 a.m. eastern time, and that's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.